Suck, Chooms. How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, if you have been following my channel for any length of time, then you already know that I try to respond to most of the comments on my videos. One reason for that is that you Chooms often come up with some great ideas for new video topics. One interesting subject that several people have already asked me about is whether using thyroid medications can help with hair loss. This is something I have pondered before a few times myself. After all, naturally occurring thyroid hormone is essential for all bodily functions, including hair growth. So why wouldn't taking thyroid hormones, either orally or topically, be a great hair growth stimulant? Well, let's go ahead and dabble into some hair loss witchery and see for ourselves if we can answer that question. First of all, let's take a look at how the thyroid gland normally works so we can better understand it and its role in hair loss. Like most hormones in the body, the thyroid gland is controlled by the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland is controlled by the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus releases a hormone called thyrotropin releasing hormone or TRH. This causes the pituitary to release thyroid stimulating hormone or T. TSH. TSH stimulates the thyroid gland to produce two hormones called T4 and T3. It turns out that T4 is an inactive form of the hormone and it has to be converted into T3 in the liver as well as other places in the body in order for it to actually work. The thyroid gland produces about 90% T4 and 10% T3. So most of the T3 we have is actually produced outside of the thyroid gland. Anyways, most of the T4 and T3 in the blood is tightly bound to proteins. It is the free T3 that is the active hormone in the blood. Like most of the hormones in the body, there is a feedback loop where if there is too much T4, less TSH is produced, while if there is too little T4, more TSH is produced. That way, the body can maintain just the right amount of thyroid hormone in the blood because having too little thyroid hormone and having too much thyroid hormone can both cause problems. Doctors can easily assess your thyroid by measuring total or free T3 or T4. However, for a general screening test, usually they just measure the TSH levels. If it is in the normal range, then most likely the T3 and T4 levels are too. A consequence of the thyroid feedback loop is if that if you take thyroid medications, that will suppress the production of TSH and it will actually shrink your thyroid. That's a very similar thing to what happens if you take supplemental androgenic steroids for improving strength and muscular hypertrophy. Your muscles will get bigger, but your balls will shrink to the size of peanuts. Obviously, if you have a low thyroid condition, you can take either T3 or T4 as a supplement and then correct the condition. But if you take a thyroid medication and you have a normal thyroid, you will just end up shrinking your thyroid gland and could end up with too much thyroid in the system, which is called hyperthyroidism. But before we get into all of that, let's first talk about the role of the thyroid hormones in promoting hair growth, because that's what you want to know, right? First of all, there's no doubt at all that thyroid hormone is essential for hair growth. We know this because there are animal studies like this one. In the study, it was found that specially bred mice that lacked the gene for the thyroid hormone receptor could not activate the hair follicle stem cells that are crucial for the start of the angine growth phase of the hair cycle. We know that this is true not just in mice, but also in humans too. This study looked at the effect of thyroid hormones on cultured human hair follicles. What the researchers found out was that, first of all, T3 and T4 did not significantly affect the rate of hair growth. However, T3 and T4 both prolonged the antigen growth phase of the hair cycle. That means a greater percentage of the hair stayed in the antigen growth phase and fewer hairs were in the telogen resting phase. The reason the antigen growth phase was prolonged was because thyroid hormone increased hair follicle stem cell activation, while at the same time, it decreased hair follicle activation apoptosis, which means cellular death. Apoptosis is what happens during the catagen phase of the hair cycle, which is the phase that terminates the angine growth phase. The catagen phase is the transition between the angine growth phase and the telogen resting phase. Anyways, the investigators showed that both T3 and T4 increased Ki67, which is a marker of hair follicle stem cell activation. At the same time, T3 and T4 also decreased something called TUNEL tunnel, which is a marker of apoptosis. 
use. One of the ways that thyroid hormone does all this is by downregulating TGF beta 2, which is a negative growth factor for hair follicle cells. As an added bonus, though, T3 and T4 both stimulate hair melanin production, which of course is what gives our hair its color because it is the lack of melanin that causes gray hair. So, given all of those vast benefits, why shouldn't someone use T3 and T4 to treat hair loss? I mean, it seems like it works, so why not try it, right? Well, in fact, there are actually some treatments in the pipeline currently in development that are based on this varied mechanism of stimulating the thyroid hormone receptor. Specifically, there is TDM105795, which is a synthetic thyroid receptor agonist that has gone through phase two clinical trials already. This drug, though, has poor systemic absorption and a short half-life, so it looks like it might be safe for topical use without causing hyperthyroidism. I've done some videos on TDM105795, and I'll go ahead and link them below. But what about just using T3 or T4 topically directly as a hair loss treatment? Is that a viable option? Well, I'm very sorry to say it, Chooms, but it is a very, very bad idea. That's because if you have normal thyroid function and you take extra thyroid hormone, you'll end up with two too high of a level of thyroid hormone in your system, which is called hyperthyroidism. One major problem hyperthyroidism causes is what you can see right here. It's when your eyes bulge out and you look like Marty Feldman who played Igor in Young Frankenstein by Mel Brooks. But worse than that, if you look at the symptoms of both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, there is a strong overlap. That's right, Jooms. Both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism both actually cause hair loss. So, if we go back and look at the basic research that we already covered, we could see that while too little thyroid hormone leads to defective hair follicle stem cell function, too much thyroid hormone leads to exhaustion of those stem cells. So, hyperthyroidism depletes hair follicle stem cells, which can lead to hair loss just like hypothyroidism. So, theoretically, this problem could affect TDM1057952, but at least in the case of TDM, it works locally so it shouldn't go systemically. Systemic. Therefore, it shouldn't cause all these problems associated with hyperthyroidism that T3 or T4 could cause if they go systemic. If you look at the list of problems caused by hyperthyroidism, it's a very long list and includes problems even more serious than hair loss, like heart problems. And unless you want to look like Marty Feldman, you probably should avoid excessive T3 and T4 levels. So, you definitely don't want to take oral thyroid hormone to treat your hair loss. But what about topical thyroid hormone? Is this a potential way to get around the dangers of oral thyroid medications? Well, even the investigators looking at topical thyroid hormone for hair loss, they caution that it can only be used as a short-term treatment, which is a pretty big problem since fighting hair loss is, after all, a lifetime commitment. One of the investigators is a gentleman named Dr. Ralph Paz, who published this article here in 2020. In the article, Dr. Dr. Paz and his co-authors go over all the evidence that thyroid hormone is important for hair growth, but we've already looked at that evidence, and it doesn't matter unless thyroid hormone can be made into a practical hair loss treatment, but as we're about to see, it sadly isn't possible. The authors of the study speculated that, in theory, topical thyroid hormone might be useful in treating telogen effluvium or treating gray hair even. That's because any systemic absorption of thyroid hormone can be monitored by measuring serum TSH levels. However, there is a major problem from topical thyroid hormone that can't be monitored by measuring TSH levels, and it is a problem so severe that it basically renders the treatment completely useless. It turns out that the biggest risk of topical thyroid hormone use is cancer. It's been shown that long-term systemic use of T4 is associated with an increased risk of developing cancer. A study of over 8 million people in Sweden showed that treatment with T4 was associated with an increased risk of many different types of cancer, including cancer of the thyroid, breast, stomach, colon, liver, pancreas, and many others. The study recommended that levothyroxine, which is a synthetic form of T4, only be prescribed for approved indications, and obviously hair loss isn't amongst those approved indications. In addition, T4 use is associated with skin cancers, including basal cell cancer and squamous cell cancer. That might especially be a huge problem if you are applying T4 directly onto the skin as you would if you were using it for hair loss. So, based on all this data, the authors state that this cancer risk strongly argues against 
against long-term topical T4 therapy. They say, quote, Instead, it would appear well advised to limit any form of topical T4 therapy in dermatology to maximally a couple of weeks, or perhaps ideally to a pulse therapy regimen with sufficiently long treatment-free intervals so as to evade or minimize the risk of carcinogenicity, unquote. So, the researchers conclude that topical therapy with T4 might be a good short-term treatment for things like skin ulcers or telogen effluvium, but long-term use is absolutely out of the question because of the severe risk of systemic toxicity and even cancer. So, as much as it would be nice to use topical T4 to treat hair graying or antigenic alopecia, topical T4 is just too risky of a long-term treatment. Unfortunately, antigenic alopecia is not a short-term treatment. It is a long-term, lifetime commitment. A drug that can only be used for a couple of weeks at a time is completely useless to treat something that is long-term and lasts a lifetime like antigenic Antigenic alopecia. Of course, a drug like TDM also stimulates the thyroid hormone receptors in the hair follicles, but it is a new drug that is undergoing clinical trials and it will have to prove itself safe in those trials. It is not T4 or T3 and it was designed to have very poor systemic absorption and a very short half-life. So, despite its mechanism, I am still very optimistic about TDM and I think it is perhaps the best growth stimulant that is currently undergoing clinical trials today. But nobody, and I mean nobody other than complete psychopaths, are going to do these type of trials with topical T4 or topical T3 medications. So we're talking about, at best, a very short-term treatment with those hormones. These hormones are an absolute dead end as far as treating androgenic alopecia goes. So even though the research, if, of course, is very interesting, thyroid drugs are absolutely not a viable hair loss treatment at all. Do not use them and do not participate in any research where these drugs are used on human beings. It is simply just too dangerous and too unethical to even consider. Normally, I wouldn't even bother making a video about this subject if it weren't for the fact that I have actually heard some people seriously consider using thyroid medications or participating in thyroid medication research. So if you're one of those people, then hopefully this video will dissuade you. Don't worry, there are plenty of extremely promising treatments in the pipeline that are well under development that I have covered on this channel many times, and I promise you, I will continue to cover them as I acquire more research. So make sure you check back often, and you can always rely on Hair Cafe as a source of great hair loss witchery. So thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. God bless.